Trevor works for you. Mm -hmm. Start talking and about random things and forget it's there. And it's, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah. So uh, if you want, I'll turn this around so you don't see yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's uh, funny that you chose this place because it's um, like it's normally it's for the theologians. They pray here. Yeah. But um, I think it's a place that has has soul because it's yeah I've been living here in this um, area, this house uh, besides this this here for. Yeah, since 2008 actually. Off and on. Off and on, yeah. Studying. So my name is uh, Napoleon Smith. And I am... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I like... Uh, I'm studying. I just finished my studies. I'm studying uh, language science. And uh, first I came to France to learn French. Because I fell in love with French. I had a very good... French teacher. How many languages did you speak before you came to France? Yeah. Because you're from the Faroe Islands, so you speak Faroese and Danish. And then, you sp did you learn German before or after you came to France? I learned it before, even before I learned French. So, if you are lang language oriented in the high school in the Faroes, you end up with uh, having five languages uh, which you have to learn fluently. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, my mother tongue, that's everybody knows one's mother tongue, and, mm -hmm. and thereafter Danish is our second official language in Fair Islands. And then um, English, we're completely drowned by media from mm -hmm. English speaking uh, countries. It's near Scotland. So. Yeah, and even Scandinavians, they sing, sing in English. So Scandinavians are generally good at English. So we have three languages as a base, basic thing, which everybody shares. And thereafter, yeah, well, I was a bit geek with languages. <laughs> I didn't like mathematics, and I liked arts and theater and drawing and languages. And actually, it was my father who who saw my talents for languages or skills, and then he pushed me a little bit so that I continued studying. Otherwise, I would, I wanted to quit school. I didn't like. I, I remember so in eighth class. I don't know how to say it in, in English, but. It's college in French, uh, when I was yeah, so finished uh, one year then. Um, it's junior high yeah, in junior the United high. States. After one year I was so tired of school that I burned all the papers outside of our house and I made a fire. <laughs> you did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but then I, I, my father said, please go to high school just for half a year and then, just for me, you know, half a year. And then I said, okay. Because I, I was, I've never been, I found, I've never liked thinking many years ahead. Mm -hmm. Whereas my father, he, he saw the future you know, far ahead, even when I came to France, I just took one year at a time, I've always been doing that. Whereas he said, okay, my son, uh, you go to France, okay, I will build a house for you, and then you stay there for five years, and oh, stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm just uh, thinking once he, one year at a time, so that, for me, that was, that, that was, um, that meant being free, not to be engaged for too many years and to say, okay, I, I take it yeah. one year at a time and then we'll see. But this one year at a time became several years and this is how I, so I finished this um, uh, thesis about um, the pedagogy of uh, Wal the Waldorf School. I went to, to Germany because I wanted also to... Waldorf? Is that what you said? Yeah, well, the Waldorf School. It's a kind of an artistic oriented school, a bit spiritual as well. But um, since you know, I, I like drawing and um, creative uh, things. And I always felt that in the academic milieu of the university, I felt somehow that it wasn't completely me. I wanted to have uh, to um, combine it with the artistic uh, world. So that was made able in this school where I could teach French to kids and then sing and draw and theater, make theater and so and it was not it was not the boring way of learning a language. So that's what I wanted to experience and that's what I wrote about and I just finished 
one and a half week ago. I congratulations. Thank you. I became a master. Well, I haven't got all the notes or what do you call it? Documents and yeah, and so, but I think I have marks. Succeeded. It's, it should be all right. <laughs> and then uh, I can show you. This was. Um, so a friend of me, she wanted to motivate me because I was having troubles with, uh, with uh, having a good rhythm of work and during the year in Germany. I was, you know, that's often my problem. I had troubles with concentrating or being structure, structured. Yeah. So I had good people around me who helped me, who have helped me with that. So she bought me this, and uh, this is like me when I'm studying, and then I should motivate myself when I finish. That's the diploma and the, the great feeling of um, success. 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 And that's what I was incredibly fantastic. Not last Monday, but the Monday before. It was a euphoric day. Uh, euphoric? Yeah, euphoric. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't slept for nights, many nights. And, but I didn't, I didn't want to sleep. I was just, it was fantastic. So, so you have rested since, right? Yeah. yeah. Good. And then now I'm... But you've been an artist for a lot longer than you've been uh, a student of uh, like teaching kids. And yeah. So. Yes. When did that start? Yes. So I have to admit that I'm influenced by the family or the milieu. Where my father is an artist. Mm -hmm. So um, as kids, we we were very lucky with the, this father with a child inside of him, you can say, who always made us, he saw our talents and then he, he has always been my biggest um, critic and as well as encourager in my life with uh, the creative things. So he was, it started out when I was five years old, he, he saw that I was uh, more expressive than the other, my brothers and sisters in drawing, we are four kids, but we were all Everybody was drawing, as most of most children draw, until they, they start to compare. They start, oh, I'm not as good as him, and then they stop because they don't dare anymore. Huh? Yeah. So, but I was continuing, I and my father he he saw that, and then he used me for the Sunday school. So I come from a Christian family, and he, uh, with a pastor in our church, he. Each year, every year, I had to make a, like a, a series of uh, drawings for to illustrate a biblical story, and so that made me grow. As well as in school, I was uh, always drawing, and what made it so special, I would say, is also that the teachers didn't want me to, to draw one, so it was really something precious. It was nice. that, yeah, it was like, that was like an incentive. It's mine. No, it's, you can take it from me. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. You drew your teachers too then, right? Yeah, and I, even at the university I continued, so I never quit this childish uh, activity. <laughs> and then at the university I even got a... Um, uh, they forbid me, they were frustrated because I was drawing in the, the exams as well. And uh, I understood why, why they didn't want me to do that, of course, because it has, <coughs> it has to be... Um, evaluated uh, anon anonymously, and they knew there's only one student in the whole of university who who draws <laughs> in the exams paper. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it was not not oh. such a good idea, but uh, a bit funny rea uh, funny reactions. And, and at the moment, I'm collecting my things, uh, and especially notes from my university time, since 2008, I've been writing and drawing and everything mixed up. So I have a big bucket of, uh, of papers and I'll throw the most of it away because for me, writing notes of something a teacher says is, is not a lie or afterwards you should look at it, it's, it's something that's past. And, but everything which is personal or not all the drawings, but the drawings where I, I like them. I, I take them and so I, I reduce a bunch like this to this and then there's only drawings and some text I've, I've written because I also like to write. But uh, I also see how, how uh, 
you always, you always uh, mostly you always get better when you're doing an activity. That's practice is the only way with everything in life. So that means that when you look, when I look at things I've made before, I never, you're never satisfied, and that's also a good thing. You always want to renew yourself, and you also need to throw away. To say, like there's a proverb that I like: "Kill your darlings." You know, you have to renew yourself as well. To not to to be when you're doing something good, it's it's nice to look at it and say. That's a good good thing I, I made that. Yeah. But then it's important to put it away and then to make something new. And not to stay too long at the, at the thing you did. The, you, the, you found good at one time. Yeah, but that's a satisfaction. That's, yeah. Why did like why do you draw? Is there a specific reason or are you just like drawing and that's that's part of you or I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a part of uh, so for me drawing is is not uh, the result of it. It's it's the, the process. It's a pleasure. I, I love to draw, and when I draw, I'm I'm really feeling the pleasure in doing that. And then it's uh, but um, so I draw in two ways. You can say I draw from my imagination. So when I'm bored with something. I draw, I, I, my, my mind goes somewhere else and then I, I do make up something. But then I also, and I do caricatures and I do car caricatures yeah. of persons. I don't want to see the persons. If I see the persons, I am disturbed. Uh, I, then I just draw from in the memory. But sometimes I forget how is the nose of this one and then I have to look. Look, uh, how is Philip, please? Okay. Ah, I forgot this nose is bigger than I thought, or you know, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, but uh, today, for example, I drew uh, a girl here in, the, in our student house, and, and then I had her in front of her, and then I like just to draw what I see directly, mm. because I'm, I have the person there, and then I don't want to invent. I want to to put this person on the paper. So you have the uh, creative drawing is more like the um, photographic, uh, yeah, uh, naturalistic drawing. The capture of moment. yeah, impressionistic capture. Of yeah, impressionistic, yeah. impressionistic. And because then you have to because the sun is going down and then the shades uh, they changes. Uh, but I don't like to often people when they see my drawings of a model. So, I can send you a photo of my son, that, you know, the parents, they, love, they want to have drawings yeah. of their children. But then I tell them, I prefer to come to their house and to draw directly. Because for me it's... It's, it's a, a picture is already... Yeah, a photo, captured. but I can do a photo, it's alright. But I find it much more interesting and um, um, a bigger pleasure to have the person in front of you. And even though he's moving around that makes you also yeah. you have to be sensible to you know it's more more alive all the movements and yeah because a photo doesn't tell the whole truth truth actually a photo of you smile like a tooth pass a smile and yeah. then there's there's only one side of you like one split second whereas the person when he's in front of you he he's more natural in a expresses way. all kinds of different Facets of themselves. Yeah. Yes. What are you planning on doing next? Because you've been drawing for ages and you've finished these master's studies. Yeah. So what's what's next for you? Yeah. So it was quite uh, surprising now when I just finished. Three schools called after me and wanted me to work for them because there's a um, a big um, emptiness or a big need of. Um, French teachers in my country, in my home country. Mm -hmm. Well, and that was it's quite strange because when I say my country, this my has, has become a bit weaker than before because because of I've been living in, in France and Germany and meeting, having so many friends from the States, from China, from everywhere. And then you start to, yeah, you start feeling more cos cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan. I feel that I can be actually happy 
in several places. And mm. It's not like I want to be there and that's it. I'm also open to, my, I might uh, um, live somewhere else as well, as well. But of course, when you when I get a wife and family and so on, then it's also nice to find a, a home really where you. Well, I go home now for one year. <laughs> as I said, I'm, I don't like um, to think too far. I'm taking one year at a time, but so I go for one year, and that's also nice for the people here who are gonna miss me and uh, that I'm gonna miss as well. To tell them, okay, I go for one year, we'll see again, you know, and I'm sure we're gonna see again. But it would be harder to tell them, okay, now I'm going away forever, and then, you know, yeah, life is is, uh, yeah. is open, and you know, if we don't know if we live. Um, I, I don't know if I I live more than this year. That is also, but normally I will be I will grow old if. But I think uh, that's in God's hands, and uh, well, I take it as it comes. What's more important is to see what is important here where I am. Now I'm, I've been in France, and there have been there's really been a meaning. I felt being here also so long because uh, I was hopeless uh, to finish to to the good time, the, uh, to the deadline of yeah. my thesis. I was always procrastinating. It became really critical, but uh, I made it, so that's the most important. And then also I can really um, deepen my relations with friends here, old friends as well as new friends <laughs> like you. So that's it. And and there I have also been during this uh, time of loneliness with the masterworks. I have uh, you know the drawing pencil is always there. And yeah, mostly. Uh, yeah, now I use mostly. Um, So when I, I read the newspapers every day in my country, especially, um, there are some things that provoke me or give me ideas, and then I, even though I have something to render, like schoolwork, when I have a, an idea in my head, I cannot uh, yeah, get it away. It has to come out, and often it takes an half an hour or maximum one hour, and then then I send it to the newspapers, which sometimes publish it if they are at the same opinion as me. Or yeah, yeah, but the drawing is a, it's a very strong communication. Uh, com it's a strong communication, strong um, communication tool. Communication tool. Uh, and I feel that through drawing, I can say things uh, more better than with words sometimes. Yeah. Especially the things that are sensible in politics or sensitive ethics, and, yeah. where people would uh, judge me right away if I started talking about it. But since I made a drawing which is has, has humor, then people, you know, they it um, it makes everybody laugh, and it has a truth, and it is e easily said and easily heard from by people. But I also have my limits, of course. So here we have um, the Charlie Hebdo, which is uh, a good uh, caricaturist. I sometimes buy it just to inspire myself, to look how, because every car cartoonist has his style, his personal style, and some are very simple, some are very de de detailed, and it's really, it's like big children, huh? Okay. But Charlie Hebdo, I don't go as far as them. Sometimes I go far, quite far. You mean as far as uh, I heard from um, hitting people's sensitivities? Okay. Yeah, I can also sometimes. Yeah, and also with my writing. But with the writing, I would, I do some. Uh, yeah, it has to be said in a clever way. But with drawing, you can really hit people, <laughs> and uh, they will not. Uh, yeah, some get really angry. I know that the cartoonist I defended. There's one cartoonist in the Faroes who's established, 
who, know, who has the, who is like the cartoonist of, Fer of the Faroe Islands. He's called Ole Pedersen, and I really like him. He's my idol. I, I did one internship in, in his uh, studio, and uh, recently he, he drew a, a position naked or women, uh, not really naked, but almost, or as a prostitute. <laughs> and uh, people were really shocked, and there were comments, long comments, and everybody was against him, even though he had drew, drawn so many others um, with, in this way. Suddenly, it was, now it was not uh, funny anymore, or funny, and then they, they really were against him, and I, I could understand the both sides. Often I, I think I have the gift to, um, to see from both sides. Also now we're, we have these conflicts between, uh, two, between cultures, in France especially. I can understand the, the Muslims, or the radical Muslims, or I can at least understand what shocks them. I, I know that they, they, they often sh much more shocked than we Westerns when it comes to drawings mm -hmm. and so drawing their profit for them it's it's really a big uh, even though for us for them it's a really big insult yeah so I would I would uh, say that I am a little bit I'm like a diplomat in some way I so I'm a Christian as I told you or I come from a Christian family and I'm a Christian myself as well yeah uh, but not I'm not afraid of you know having an opinion but I, I also respect respect other cultures and other, and sometimes I'm not publish a drawing to avoid uh, hurting uh, someone. Yeah, hurting someone sometimes. Yeah, um, and also I'm careful with blasphemia. So they have Charlie Hebdo. They, what I would not do, what they do sometimes is that they go very far with. Um, with um, black humor as well as um, as the sex and uh, blasphemy, blasphemy, yeah. blasphemy. Whereas I am more uh, careful with those things. Uh, you try to avoid them, is what you mean by that, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I try to avoid them because I I can see that they they really know. Uh, about the reactions of uh, the Muslims, and um, and it's like they, they the more they are like, angry, the, the more happy they are actually. Yeah, it's, but that's a natural. I all, I all, I can also feel that sometimes it's, it's nice to to um, annoy someone. Annoy. <laughs> that's it's just a pester. It's the, uh, and so I'm working a bit with someone who's always annoying. The politically correct people in the Faroe Islands, yeah. uh, and I really I enjoy that because I feel that there's so many, there's a majority of people in my country who let things happen, things that um, that I don't agree with, but where you, where it's like you cannot say your opinion or people are afraid to say the opinion because it's not politically correct, and that's what really annoys me sometimes. And that. There, that's where I, I think we need uh, to annoy also mm. in some in those things when the ethical values for me are very important and as well as um, um, that you can laugh at everybody actually because when it's, there's this political correctness. It's like people have to think one way, and it's like the H. G. Anderson. Do you know H. G. No. H. G. Anderson? That's a Danish author, the most famous Danish author. He's, he was uh, writing um, fairy tales in 19th century. Was he the one that wrote the uh, Little Mermaid? No, that was yeah, the Little yeah. Mermaid. Was? Okay, okay. And he wrote a, a fairy tale which I like very much, which really tells uh, this um, aspect. It's the, the new clothes of the, the emperor. Do you know this story? No, go, go ahead. Please. It's a fantastic story. Well, there's a kingdom, a lot of people, and then there are some cheaters, huh? some very 
intelligent, but uh, businessmen are uh, cheaters, uh, true cheaters who want to cheat the king. They want to, to get our money in doing so. And not pay taxes or what? Yeah, they, they, they are clever. They, they see that they, they are actually very wise, but they do something which is um, a lie actually. They go to the king and they tell him, well, we are the best uh, um, to make the clothes because the king wants to have new clothes. And they say, we're the best to, to um, design clothes. Tailors. Or Tailors, yeah. And they, they're cheating and they actually, they tell the king, this is, these clothes are so beautiful and so, but if you, um, for people who are, that are um, not, are stupid, or yeah. they will not see the clothes, the people who are stupid. Huh? Only clever or good people will see these clothes. Yeah. And um, so the king accepts. And actually, there are no clothes. They just look like this is just here. And they 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 made the king believe that it's clothes. Because if he says he doesn't see it, then that makes yeah. Then then he he loses his uh, his uh, <laughs> prestige. And so he doesn't say anything. Even the whole kingdom, thousands of people that are cherishing when he comes on the scene, he's completely naked. And but they say, hey, cherish the new king and his new clothes. And everybody is just following the, the mass, uh, the yeah. mainstream. And so there's only one there's one child in the, the, this mass who tells his father, Baba, the king is naked. And people hear him and <laughs> everybody laughs and actually they discover that the child has told the truth. Yeah. Whereas everybody was blind, actually. And then everybody sees it and even the king laughs, even though he's completely naked. <laughs> so it's a very <laughs> humoristic. Um, yeah. And that's some way, um, that's sometimes what I see uh, in politics where uh, people are blind uh, in many ways and then. Um, they don't say. They don't say what they see. They say other things. Uh, yeah. And then the child, which doesn't have any the ideologies or theories, just looks and, and see sees the right thing. Yeah, straight through. Yeah. So you you tend to when you do drawings for newspapers and stuff, you tend to take a stance. It's not just. This is how I see things. There's also a kind of a, a message behind it as well, or is it all yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly, I tend to draw uh, drawings that are have an intellectual value as well. That are not that make people people think, and sometimes there are some symbols that are in the drawing that you don't see right away, and even myself. Sometimes I make a drawing, I don't, I don't see everything right away. I just make it because it's, there's like an idea, I have to put it up. And then sometimes, one week later, I look at, at the drawing again. And then I see things I didn't saw, see yeah. when I drew it. So you're like inspired when you do these yeah. things? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Do, do you have an example or uh, one you'd like to talk about in particular? One day? You sent to the newspapers, or was had to do with news at some point. Any ideas? Yeah, what can I say? There was one drawing I did recently. Uh, yeah, for example, that was for my father's birthday. I did a caricature of my father with his big mustache, and, and then I made the bubbles around him because he had he got sixty. I made bubbles around him of his whole life in one on one page. And what the, and then I oh that was actually not the drawing where I actually it was more the writing. So I correct myself a little bit. Maybe I have more of these experiences with my, my writing because, because I love writing. I've been writing uh, for many years like about my life in France, but in an original way. And, some, and then for my father, I wrote, I, I drew this drawing, but then I wrote a poem that went with it. So I print, I sent it to the journal newspaper. And then in the poem, I 
and wrote a very compact poem. And there I, I saw some things. Um, yeah, two weeks later I saw what I didn't have, had seen, but what, which was actually surprised me. Because um, I, I, I used a metaphor to describe my father's um, artistic world as we have experienced him as children. So I said with my father, uh, the shells by the sea became mountains and the mount and the the space came close to us. The, 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 yeah, the, the heavens. heavens. The heavens came yeah. to us. And, and I, I said that to I meant when I was writing I meant the imagination which which is endless, where a child can be obs obsessed by a small shell. And for for this child, this is the whole world at that moment. Huh? Yeah. And my father, he, he had this apathy, and this, he could come into our world and and enjoy things with us, as like Picasso says, uh, every child is an artist. Huh? <laughs> and then uh, I saw some things because he's an artist and works with the natural materials. Yeah. And he actually works with shells. He, he crushes shells, and then he paints mountains with shells. But I had to <laughs> thought about that. that. But it was my father who came to France, and then he 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 had understood that directly, and every everybody else understood what I didn't hadn't uh, put in. You, you said something. Everyone understood something more closer to the actual. Yeah. Whereas for me, it was something really uh, Maybe spiritual or yeah, yeah intellectual. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It, there's a drawing I remember um, that I didn't necessarily understand very well, but it was about, I think it was about refugees in Germany. Yeah. Or uh, Europa, as you wrote on the. What was the. Um, there's one thing in that drawing, I don't know if you noticed this or if you did it on purpose, but it looks like the refugees are walking under her feet. This one? Yeah. What is yeah. What is, it? what is it? Yeah, so this is an illustration of an article. So that's why you don't understand it so well. Ah, okay. Because you have to write, read the article and then you will understand everything. But uh, the point of this drawing is an article of my friend, a very critical friend, who, who liked to, likes to cri cri criticize the Pharisees of, the, of politics, you know? Yeah. To, like the, the king there who was naked. And, yeah, it's not close, it's you're yeah. naked. Yeah. <laughs> like the child. So he, um, he always goes against uh, these people who, So this woman here represents his modern left, uh, often left oriented people. But uh, he's also on the left side of politics, but criticizes these um, modern people always, you know, they are right on, they, they, they are politi politically correct. This woman and she, this earring she has, that's you know, love, but they, they use the word love in a superficial way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, at the moment, there's as well, there's refugees, that's uh, one subject in politics, but uh, there's also uh, her, um, her sweater there with um, the rainbow colors, which is the um, LGBT, LGBT which are very. Um, Noisy at the moment, and and people support them, and it's like if you don't support them, then you are not politically correct, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though they, yeah. even not all the homosexuals of our country are, do agree with them man, because they are, they are they go very far very far with their ideology, and as if that's the only way for um, for the the rights of the homosexual people or the people who are other who are not um, marrying the other gender like most of the people in the society yeah? yeah and so this is a narcissistic person as you can see the mirror yeah and so it's politically correct that I am I also have empathy with uh, refugees I think um, we should, each one shall help, we shall help our, um, the people around us, and 
people in need, we can help in our way. And, but um, but there's so much on Facebook where it's, it's superficial. It's so it's politically correct. Yes, we have refugees. So but this this person doesn't have any concrete idea how to really help these people mm. in a concrete, and realistic way. So she doesn't really see them. They are. She's even stepping on them because she doesn't really help. She she says, "Ah, oh, it's everything is love and peace," and she's naive. And the refugees also come to Europe with an, with a phantasm. Also, there's a phantasm on both sides. Sides. The refugees phantasm about paradise in Europe. They fantasize about. So yeah. there's the clouds here, Mother Europe, and they all came in masses. And of course, it, there's not. Um, it will not be paradise for all of them since they're coming so many. But hopefully. To go as good as possible, <laughs> and this person is also fantastic about a Europe where there will be no conflicts and where everybody will live in harmony, which is a fantastic thought. And I, I'm quite utopic myself, but I'm I don't like when when you go politically in and you tell people that that you don't that we mustn't be ourselves. I think when we are ourselves. With our own heart, we can help better and more, uh, more than when there's a political elite, uh, as this author says, that forces us. You must accept this. If you don't accept this, then you're extreme right wing or, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> but they, are, of course, they uh, they experience. They come from extremely hard uh, circumstances with war. So that's the symbolize the symbol of. The dark clouds. Yeah. And she's even crying here, but she doesn't really cry for these people, these poor people that need help. But she cries because she feels that she's such a good humanist and she's such, such a good good person. Uh -oh. yeah. So there's this side of Facebook, oh. a narcissistic side of Facebook. Yeah. Uh, it's so horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what uh, the article is about, actually. So that's. You, were you asked to do the drawing for the article? Or? Yeah, okay. and he, he liked it. So, well, so it, we have been working together for some years. And yeah, he likes... Uh, we, we have a little bit the same vision of things, so we worked well together. Because, as a cartoonist, mostly the newspapers don't accept my drawings, mostly. Because when you're not a, an established artist or a cartoonist, until then, you're not really respected, and they always compare you with the, the established one. And they say, "Oh, you don't draw like him. Draw like him. You, he uses that. You must do like him." Or even I've experienced in France. I was drawing for a Christian newspaper in France for some years, and, and they even changed my drawings. And then I quit. You know, they I drew and then they, they erased without asking me, and they changed just because. They didn't have the same vision as uh, the, as me, but I think that is, that was that I quit. <laughs> wow, I didn't I didn't even know um, some newspapers would go that far. <laughs> that's that's impressive. I thought it was either you you take the drawing or you don't. Yeah, but normally it's that, but well, that was quite weird. Normally it's not like that. But I've been fired once as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, actually, it's it's nice. You really. When someone defies you for being yourself, you're in the. I think that's. Then you're a good cartoonist. That's a good. If you start to do like people know, that then it becomes business. You know, you just want to earn money. Then you're not an artist anymore. An artist, he has to be himself. Yeah, you're no longer an artist. You're working for money instead yeah. of working for the. Of course, you have to not to be too proud or stubborn and so on, humble because the talents that I have, it's. Um, yeah, I have the talents which I've got from God through my birth and my father, of course, he has really trained me to develop these um, talents and myself, I, yeah, of course you can have talents but not use them, so I want, I'd like to use uh, at least some of the talents like the, 
like the drawing and the writing and and the teaching, yeah, languages. So what would you like to write? What would I, would I like to write? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I have another thesis on. Yeah, I have <laughs> that project actually. I wanted actually to do it right after the studies, but now I got a job right away, so I, it has to wait a little bit. But I want to go with a fishing boat, fishing vessel in the Faroes. Because there's um, these fishing vessels where, where there's, it's a work, it's the lowest socially valued work in the society at the moment. Nobody wants to do it, even though they're screaming for people. It's only, it's such a hard work, it's very hard work, and you don't have any social life, you just go away all the time fishing, you're just fishing all the time, and you work, you work, you work, you eat, you sleep, you work. So it's, that's, that's really the workers on the bottom of the society. And then I had this idea, I was quite, I have always been against this uh, snobbism sometimes that I see in, my, in the Faroe Islands or in or France as well, France, yeah. where you evaluate so much, uh, like the teaching in the high school, like if that was more important than other works in society, washing, uh, building and so on. Especially providing food. Yeah, providing food, you're working with, with the hands. Yeah. And so that sometimes I... If you have no one to make your clothes, yeah. no one to make your house, and no one to make your food, you're pretty much worse off than the Stone Age. So yeah. yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. And I have this idea to, to do like an ethnographical um, experience, to go with uh, such a boat, because it will, I can get work there like this, you know, they scream for people and and nobody wants to work there. And even my friends, they say, no, no, we don't do. Ah, it's, don't you know that it's the, the, the worst work in the whole society, you're paid, uh, not paid well, and it's such a hard work and so on. But I don't, you know, I want to turn things around a little bit. People tend to, well, I, am, I just finished, I'm a master now. I would like to write a bit of humoristic book. About, I will do portraits, I will go with the boat, and each evening when I finish work, I will write about uh, the persons that I see and about the experience of being with the ship. Mm -hmm. And then I will draw as well. I will draw, especially the hands of this, these fishermen and them, themselves. And there will be immigrants as well, so from different countries. And as I'm a curious person, I like to learn about cultures and languages. And then to make a book which is not academic at all, it will be a book uh, with uh, like bits of experiences and uh, portraits and drawings, also funny drawings. And, uh, and then the title of the book will be From Master to Fishing Vessel or something like that. So. Like to, yeah, like turn it around. Yeah, turn it around to, to make it a book that will make pe people think a bit differently. Like say, hey. Yeah, kind of like a backwards success story. Or yeah. Something. People will be shocked, you know, it's like when they go with the whistle, they well, hey, look what you've been studying. You've been studying for five years. What are you doing? You have to, man, now you have to be a functionary, an academic, and earn a lot of money. You have to yeah, be a public worker. Or yeah, yeah, so. But it's true that it is. Uh, I'm also conscious about um, the hard life that these men have. So I'm also going to be realistic, and I'm not going to say it. It's, I'm not going to be naively romantic about the, the muscles yeah. because I know that they they always often get uh, health problems very fast, or when they're 60, 50. And so I understand, for example, the husband of my aunt, which has been, who has been um, without work for four years. I understand, uh, I asked him, why don't you go with the vessel, but my aunt, she got angry at me. But he, he has done that since he was 14, you know. Yeah, so his health never, is... Yeah, and, uh, it's, it's something that the youngsters should do, and, and now he's 50, he, he must do something better than that, and I understand I'm completely, completely, I do completely agree. But you're at an age where you can go out and do something crazy like yeah. that. Yeah. Just to write a book, like... Yeah, as well as um, to 
idealize it a little bit because going out with a fishing vessel has always been like a bit de passage of the Faroe Islands, the ferries men. <laughs> yeah. They, so uh, even my father's generation, my father was a sailor, his generation, when they were 14, they, they went to, with a fishing boat, they went with as teenagers, they were teased aboard, they were afraid, they were uh, anxious, so and they came back as men. So there was like a, this... So it's a ritual for becoming a man. Yeah, so now no, I'm 28, so I have to become a man. Oh, it's, it's time. Because <laughs> normally you didn't... So you haven't been on a fishing vessel before? Or? Yeah, I was with my father when I was 12, for 9 days. Yeah, well, I was throwing up the whole time. I actually drew, I drew all the men aboard. Yeah. Ah, I should find those, those drawings. And my father, he actually, he didn't dare to show the drawings to all the men because I had drawing. There was one man who I thought looked like a frog, and then he, <laughs> I exaggerated him. And he didn't show it to him. But, and the captain, he looked like a, a Christmas, you know, the uh, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. So I, I drew him like Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. So I've always been like that, actually. And. Um, Yeah, and today you actually, you have too little of this learning about life in a more harsh and responsible way, like that at that time, so young men or women as well, um, they grew, they might um, become adults uh, slower, because you can, I, I think, uh, some people say, yeah, now today, the iPhone and the high school has replaced this experience of, of going out and with actual real work. Yeah, with your but I don't. And... I don't agree that an iPhone can make you an adult. It has to. You have to take responsibility. A cat can play with an iPhone. Yeah, but even also intellectual work or having resp being responsible for other people. That's also the same. It's not like fishing whistle is the only way. No. There are several ways. Well, so if there was one thing you could change about society, it would have to do with either political correctness or uh, like uh, people growing up in a more responsible way of realizing. Yeah, and I've even thought about that. That shocked my friends. Maybe that's too author authoritarian, too little democratic. <laughs> but, you know, I, I saw that in Germany they have this system of. Uh, a civic year where the youngsters go out and they work for free and they get the experiences uh, in the responsibility of social year. So before they had military service yeah. and now it's become a voluntary service but it's like a culture, they do it a lot. And um, It's instead of their military service, yeah. it's a civil service. Yeah. Yeah. And I had this idea that... It lasts 12 months instead of uh, 10. And uh, if they do it outside the country. Well, I don't know if, I don't think people in the Netherlands would accept that to become a, like an obligation. Huh? I know that obligation, I don't like obligations mostly, but I am, I like, um, I think that uh, it is good not to, you have to, yeah, we have, I like to have a socially, a society which is, is soft as well, or takes care of, of the whole elderly people, the children, and you know, we have a very extremely good health system in the Faroe Islands, social system. Is it the same as Denmark? Or? Yeah, the same. Okay. Very high standards. But sometimes it just becomes too soft, where people talk so much about their rights and so on that they're not thankful about what they have and they don't. Uh, they they attend that everything shall come from the state, you know, instead of um, because if you look at uh, the Second World War in my country, I was studied a lot uh, through my grandmother and and her sisters uh, filmed them quite a lot. So I like documentary filming, like you also, <laughs> and they told me about uh, about things people created created through, during so, such hard times. The people who invented them were extremely creative because they didn't kidnap import everything, you know, 
from abroad. So they started up things, factories with the whale and the things from the fishes or whales. They produce things that we can't produce today, but that we're too lazy to do or we don't. It's, life is so easy that, you know, sometimes that um, the creativeness is sometimes, sometimes goes away in this just getting money from the state and, and then and then you know you, you don't accept to to do new things because you think that it's too little money or or it's not comfortable yeah not comfortable it will shock others or people will not accept it uh, yeah. interesting yeah yeah I understand that kind so yeah to come back to my interests. Um, I have a lot of interests. I like to do, well, to do a lot of things. That's always been my problem as well. <laughs> choosing studies, choosing. My father had really to kick me in the ass, you know, for you know, choose that and finish, you know, because I was I was laying in my bed. Oh, shall I do arts? Shall I do documentary movies? Shall I do that? You know, and then, um, but um, in choosing, you have just have to choose. Now I have been. I've learned to choose to take decisions in life through these years, so I'm more mature in this area, and so I choose now. And then, even though there are possibilities in France, which I will quit now going home, um, it's like that. Just take it as it is, that's, and you just go forward. And because I like one, uh, there's one proverb in English: every beginning. And something. You have to accept that. You cannot be everywhere. And you're even not happy when you're always trying to please everyone. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby has also said one quotation of Bill Cosby. Um, I don't know the way to success, but the key into failure is trying to is trying to please everyone. And that's completely true. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I actually put it out of my list because I see what. Yeah. yeah. Or, but anyhow, he's not a. He's a human. So. <laughs> he's a human. They always uh, sooner or later they deceive us. Uh, they disappoint us. Yeah. Humans always disappoint. That it's human nature. It's not only good. Yeah. Well, cool. Oh, thanks. Is that right? Yeah. I think that's, that's amazing, like, I can't even find the button on my thing. <laughs> <laughs>